now let me pull it hard. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video on this channel and today we have the ST Scrambler with me. So this is the fourth day with the motorcycle and uh, as I mentioned with the Java review, I have to put few disclaimers on this video before I start talking about this motorcycle. If you have taken a decision that you are gonna buy this motorcycle, just go ahead. There is no replacement for this motorcycle. It's a good motorcycle. It has its own pros and cons. Go ahead. No problem. Don't waste your time with this video. Just go ahead. Your decision is good. Don't worry. If you are confused with this motorcycle and confused with some other motorcycle which is totally in some other uh, genre then stay with the video. I have to share a few things about it. Uh, fourth day with the motorcycle. So just like the Java motorcycles, day one I was not liking the motorcycle. Day two I was finding many cons with the motorcycle. Day three I was adjusting with the motorcycle. Day four I feel like I'm used to this motorcycle. So that's the timeline of myself with this motorcycle. First of all just look at the looks. It is just a radical design. Nobody has ever come with this kind of a design in single cylinders. Obviously, you can look up to the Ducati Scrambler or the Triumph Scrambler. You'll really find the design inspirations. But yes, the Scrambler is a bold move from Misty. And uh, they have successfully made a motorcycle which actually looks like a Scrambler. We'll talk about that, whether it just looks like a, a Scrambler or is it a real Scrambler. But look-wise, it's just brilliant. It comes with 19-inch bigger tires on the front and slightly longer travel suspension and uh, the seat the tank everything looks very neat and clean and very sturdy as well so let's look at each and everything so the headlight the headlight has a st symbol on the middle and it looks premium as well the throw of the headlight is kind of fine i'm not that happy with the low beam but the high beam is kind of fine and this comes with led indicators which is small and that also gives a very nice feel to the motorcycle the upper mud flap feels like a uh, beak and it looks neat and the suspension travel if you see from outside itself the travel is not that like an adventure motorcycle but longer than a normal street motorcycle and you have the beefier mrf tires and spoke wheels and coming onto this side this design of the engine actually fits perfectly with this motorcycle you see that and look at the tank man what a finishing it's fantastic it looks brilliant and coming onto the seat uh, this is my most favorite part of this motorcycle the seat is extremely comfortable and it's extremely nice to see as well the single seat setup which you actually need for a scrambler and there you can see an exhaust actually it's a double-sided exhaust and it looks actually a bit short I think we are more used to seeing the interceptors uh, 650 exhaust I mean the Royal Enfield uh, 650 exhaust so that is a bit longer and this feels a bit shorter and coming on to this tail section absolutely brilliant looking what a look man <laughs> the tail section you don't need a tail tidy here the round tail light the smaller grab rails and you see that the tie hugger just brilliant I don't have anything to say look wise it is just brilliant but only one thing is now when we look closer I see a lot of quality issues on this motorcycle what I have to say is that the build quality on this motorcycle is good but the person who has built this motorcycle hasn't done with quality that's my personal feel because this tank and this portion everything is so steady you see this Actually, the tire hugger and everything is very strong. But the thing is, there are minor things which got actually missed or wrongly designed few things which you will get to see when you look closer. For example, you see there is a small wire over here which is exposed and which is uh, actually that is not good. That can be really affected by external things and, and the wiring kit may get affected. And there as well, you can see the wires over there and uh, again exposed wire here and the greatest part is this exhaust actually doesn't have that kind of finish look at this portion and all it doesn't feels a brand new exhaust even though it's a stock exhaust it feels like an aftermarket exhaust so there are quality issues if you look very closer that's why i told the build quality is good the alloys and everything is premium but when they put together it doesn't look so cool especially you see the bolts which has been used over here and it's almost like you went to a normal garage which you see on the roadside and just fix it over there there are minor quality issues like that but yeah let's keep all those looks things aside and let's get into the things a little more detail so let me hop on this so it's not a tall motorcycle it's really nice the seat is ultimately nice the riding posture is one thing which i enjoy i have completely relaxed riding posture the foot pick is slightly forwards it i'm able to sit upright and the handlebar is on the right position where actually i'm sitting uh, like on a chair and the mirrors are kind of okay it is giving a decent visibility but the thing is since the motorcycle has little bit of vibration issue which is actually not seen on the handlebar but you can see it on the mirror so the vision gets blurry on the mirror that's all 
and uh, from this angle this motorcycle actually looks good the legendary sd the painting and the stickers everything looks really nice so the painting guy has done his job perfectly at least on this motorcycle so regular scrambler design <laughs> you have this dash slightly towards the right side so before that let me just walk you through all the switches on the handlebar here we have the high beam low beam and the pass switch and here you have m s up and down buttons i'll talk about this when i come to that part and indicator and horn and on this side we have the kill switch the caution lamp and the ignition and when we turn on the key we have pretty much basic things on this and it looks nice as well what we see over here is the big tachometer here the speedometer the odometer and if i press the m button it goes to trip a then trip b and comes back to auto and gear position indicator fuel meter and this motorcycle actually comes with three riding modes so it is showing road here so road off road and rain mode is there and you have the time here and if i press the s button or the up arrow nothing happens on this motorcycle i don't know why <laughs> i honestly don't understand why it happens if i long press the down button the riding mode actually changes from road to rain that means i can change the riding mode with a long press on the with the lower arrow key but nothing actually happens with s or this button i don't know i don't understand it's a brand new motorcycle something is not working or oh so that's about it i don't really understand and here you have a charging circuit if you open this you can see a usb and a type c so that is good but honestly i'm a little bit disappointed that two of these buttons are not working with this brand new motorcycle so let me just turn on the motorcycle and make you hear the exhaust sound it actually sounds nice when it is idling now actually you will hear the exhaust sound so when it actually goes to an higher revs actually you will hear more of an engine sound than the exhaust sound so let's hit the highway and talk about the things later So we are back on highway. So let me just turn on the motorcycle. Before I pull it hard, I'll show you something. If I just leave the clutch like this, the motorcycle actually shows an urge to move a little faster than any other 300 cc motorcycle. But the thing is, if I don't give the throttle much, the motorcycle actually shows some kind of distress and it starts knocking. Now let me pull it hard. In fact, the engine is tuned for a nice mid-range performance. So, if you are riding on this highway like that, you can easily cross the speed of 120 km per hour mark. I actually did a 145 or something as a top speed. But the thing is, when it comes to the city, the gearing is something different. It is not exactly tuned for our uh, Indian city traffic conditions. The first gear feels a little shorter. We tend to shift a bit early. But the thing is, once you shift to the second gear, and if the speed is not about 20 or 25 km per hour, then the motorcycle actually starts knocking. Uh, this knocking is there everywhere. Be in the first gear or in the sixth gear, it is there. So you have to be in that correct RPM. You have to be in that mid RPM actually uh, to ride the motorcycle comfortably. Like this is one thing which I didn't like in the day one. Then later I just got adjusted to it and I'm now used to the system. I just make sure that I'll, I'll come into the first gear whenever I have to cross a hump or whenever I'm heading onto a deeper pothole. I just make sure that I'm onto the first gear so that I don't stall the motorcycle. So that kind of issues is there. And another thing about the engine is, if I'm riding on this highway and I'm keeping the throttle constant, I still can feel uh, some difference in the acceleration. That means the fueling is not that proper. So this is my observation. If you are an owner, just let me know if, if you are also observing the same thing with the motorcycle. This is not that bothering. But it is slightly bothering if you are constantly on a highway and riding and you get to know that someone else is meddling with your throttle. So the sweet spot on this motorcycle uh, to cruise is something like 90 to 110 and you can even push it to 120 and all. And in all these speeds actually there is no vibration till a speed of 90 km per hour and after that we can feel the vibration on the foot peg and the vibration is there on this tank as well. But this tank vibration is not being felt to the rider because I really don't feel like doing this all the time like holding on to the tank and all so I'm kind of comfortable there and there are no vibration on the seat and on the handlebar as well this is a minor vibration which has been carried to the mirror apart from that I don't really feel it now let's talk about the other things let's first talk about suspension the suspension is actually onto a stiffer side it is one among the thing which I actually liked in the beginning and I started disliking because I like stiffer suspension but the thing is on this motorcycle 
you can feel each and everything on the road it actually gives all the vibrations and all the impact on the handlebar and i can feel that so it's a bit annoying after some time and another thing is like uh, to take it on off roads as well the suspension is not the ideal uh, i was doing off roads uh, a couple of days ago and i was having a terrain like this so when i jump out of one of the peak and if i have to land on the other peak uh, it actually rejects me <laughs> it is almost like the suspension saying to me that i have a boyfriend it just ditched me off i just rammed into the other peak and uh, it's not giving any proper feedback so that's one thing i honestly feel the suspension have to be worked out on this motorcycle i know that this is not a true off road motorcycle this is a scrambler but ideally scramblers should have some amount of off roading capacity as well and uh, when it comes to the brakes the brake is actually good uh, we are getting a good braking performance but again the suspension is meddling with the brakes as well because uh, the feedback from the brake is very less because whenever we brake motorcycle what we will do is we'll start braking and we'll get a dive on the suspension that dive is not there that means uh, our body is actually tuned if you are riding it for a longer time our body is actually expecting that dive and uh, we actually miss that feedback so that feedback issue is there apart from the feedback the braking is good but the motorcycle is able to brake comfortably but the suspension actually just the brakes as well and coming on to the clutch the clutch is actually on to a uh, softer side and the clutch play is also not too long uh, but the thing is uh, since i told this motorcycle has knocking issue and if you are riding this motorcycle inside city you'll be almost playing the harmonium all the time with your left hand and that can give you a little bit of pain on your left hand and uh, the gearbox is actually good i like it the gearbox is actually tight but crisp you understand that right it's not like a sports bike gearbox this one requires you to put a boot uh, with the chappal it is very difficult to shift gears and with the shoe as well it is slightly difficult to shift gears but with boot it is comfortable so this gearbox is actually something like an off-roader or a scrambler kind of a gearbox mostly like a dry clutch gearbox that's what i can feel so now looking on to the ownership aspects of this motorcycle this motorcycle actually comes for 2 lakh 74000 on road which personally i feel value for money because this is one of a kind of a motorcycle and at this price point this kind of a performance and a unique motorcycle is definitely a value for money that's my personal take on it and uh, the motorcycle has to be serviced once in 6000 kilometers so the first service is done 1000 kilometers and from then onwards 6000 km and uh, the free service actually will cost you something like 1500 rupees and the paid service is something like 1500 to 2000 that is also kind of okay and the mileage claim from sd is uh, 43 km per liter i doubt whether we'll get it or not uh, according to the java perak owners basically this is the same java perak engine which is differently tuned so we can expect a mileage of 30 to 35 inside city and uh, something like 35 to 38 or max 40 on highways and well that is actually a good mileage for this performance uh, so now let's see so let's take each and every place where this motorcycle can go let's talk about city riding aspects so when it comes to city riding this motorcycle is actually easy to handle it's not a heavy motorcycle you can easily maneuver it no problem it's not the easiest motorcycle to maneuver but definitely it's a good motorcycle to ride inside city and uh, to take u turns and all i don't have really have any issues but the problem of taking a u turn especially if you are a beginner is um, i've already mentioned because of this knocking issue you have to come down to the first gear that is the safest point and if at all you miss the clutch the motorcycle the 330 cc motorcycle will stall and if you are stalling and if you are having a lean angle when you are taking u turn there's a high chance that you'll drop the motorcycle because generally we won't be able to balance this motorcycle this heavy motorcycle on one leg but while riding on straight line and all we don't feel the heaviness but once it's falling you'll start feeling the heaviness and another thing is this motorcycle can comfortably go left i mean i can take a complete u turn towards the left side without any problem but if i take a u turn to the right side i can see that these wires are actually hindering the motion so that's some quality issue which i'm finding with this motorcycle and when it comes to the heating issues i really didn't felt any heating issue with this motorcycle until now i was wearing a jean and i was wearing shoes almost all the time i didn't mean to say that sometimes i ride naked but i meant to say that i'm wearing pants and shoes almost all the time so during those time and all i never faced any heating issues on the motorcycle so that's kind of okay and i've already mentioned that this motorcycle actually has three riding modes so one is rain one is road and uh, one is off road so the road mode is actually full power and normal abs intervention and when it comes to the rain mode i feel the power is little less it is much more softer not so underpowered and all but kind of softer and the abs intervention is more and if you put the mode into off road mode the abs get disengaged for the rear wheel i think you can get a feel of the road on my voice itself because uh, i can feel each and every bump on the road now it's because of the suspension 
So yeah, when it comes to the highways, there's a slight amount of refinement issues, a slight vibration. But that's kind of fine. Uh, the six gear is actually managing well for cruising. But if at all you have to do a high speed uh, overtaking, then just put it onto the fifth gear and you'll get the power. And most of the time I felt that you actually hear the engine noise more. So it's better to have earplugs if you're planning to ride on uh, highways. And uh, coming onto the off-roads, I have taken this motorcycle for off-roads. So I thought the tires will hold up good, but uh, honestly I feel the tire is actually uh, look-alike for an off-road motorcycle. It's not performing well on off-roads, neither that well on roads as well. So my recommendation is better go for a good pair of tire. Oh, you see that? There is considerable knocking on this motorcycle now. This is 6 gear and 60 km per hour. Yeah, let's come back to the point. So few things which turns off this motorcycle for off-road. First thing is definitely the suspension. The suspension is not that tuned because you get to feel everything on the off-roads. But if you are an expert off-roader and you think that you need a tighter suspension, you can actually use this, no problem. But if you are a beginner or an intermediate off-roader, it takes some time to get used to this kind of riding, which requires a little more effort and which requires a little more tricks to get expertise on. And standing on the footbag and riding and all are fine, no problem. The ergonomics wise, this is good and look wise is also, this is just brilliant. But yeah, purpose wise, I'll say it's a moderate off-roader. Don't expect too much out of this. Now let's see, is this a motorcycle you are searching for? Uh, honestly, I'll say if you want a good looking motorcycle, a unique motorcycle, which has good touring capabilities and decent city riding capabilities and very less off-roading capability, then you can look for this motorcycle. And if you ask me if I have to buy this motorcycle, I'll, I'll first of all say that I, I don't really want to buy this motorcycle. <laughs> Honestly, I'll say that I'll give uh, SD some more time to fix the issues, especially the dial issue, the quality issues, the welding, the exposed wires, the exhaust, everything. I'll just give some more time to bring the version to. Uh, if at all I have to buy this motorcycle, uh, then probably the modifications which I'll be doing is just put some uh, softer oil in the suspension or I'll just change the suspension setup itself. I'll buy a new one if it is possible to fix on this one and I'll go for uh, some uh, additional lights for my night rides and that's it I might not be looking for something else because one major thing which you look forward in a scrambler is the ergonomics which is like perfect on this motorcycle so that's all about my review on the SD scrambler I hope this video is helpful for you if you have any doubts on this motorcycle uh, just let me know I'm more than happy to help you out and uh, most probably I'll be getting the other SD bike soon yeah, of course, not from showrooms or directly from SD, you know that. <laughs> so yes, I hope this video is helpful for you. And as always, show some love in the form of likes and comments. See you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.